I mean, this is regardless of, of race. I, I see you as a successful person. Like, I don't see you as needing to prove anything else or to aspire to anything greater, unless you in your own heart desire that for yourself in your life. And I think there are at least a good, there would be a good portion of my network of people who are white who would actually see you the same. Now, I'm not suggesting, Andre, that they don't carry bias in some way, that there's not unconscious associations. At the same time, I think they would still see you as successful and capable. And to the extent that our networks are not mixed in the way that might we might ideally want, you know, like for our society, for our country, um, we don't get to see that. Like you don't get to see the 20, 50, 100 white people in my network who if they met you and they knew about what you've done in your life, just who you are as a person and as a professional, they would evaluate you in a very positive light. <laughs> they would, but you don't get to see that, right? And so I wonder the way in which we, you and I and others, you know, stick to our own too much or not sometimes consciously, but sometimes, you know, just, this is just the networks we're given, how much that plays a role in our beliefs about how others judge us. Um, and I, again, I'm not saying that, that, that it doesn't actually happen. I just think the expectation that it might happen is probably greater than the extent to which the frequency with which it would actually happen. Um, in, in, again, in terms of this is just my network. And I, I hear you loud and clear when you share in past episodes how, Todd, you live differently. You, you grew up in Southern California and you have a particular kind of network that, you know, you're, you very recently came over, has a strong Jewish. I, I understand, I understand that, I have, that I'm different in, in certain ways when in compared to the broader white population, but I have networks beyond that. Like I know people who are not white people who are not, don't come from the same kind of background that I did and just know that they would, they would approach you in the same way that I'm describing. And I guess that's why I kind of come back to some of these questions of what, what drives you to feel like you have to present in a certain way. Like I used to, I don't know if you, I don't know if I ever expressed this to you. Um, you know, I used to pick up your sayings and your tonalities and it would just come out of me like when I was back home you know or I would say something like oh I know what Andre would say about that he's all that in a bag of chips right <laughs> and we would no no this can come off we would laugh about it but not laughing you at you laughing at me it was that's funny <laughs> Mm -hmm, but so, you weren't laughing at me. So here, mm -hmm. so you got to understand the comparison of our experiences. You express yourself at university and get rebuffed and feel like you need to change. I am expressing who you are back home and people are not just accepting, but feeling joy around it, right? That they're, and, and you got to meet my family. They, they, yes. you feel this way, embraced you, right? Yeah, um, they did, they did. And probably, hopefully you felt it was somewhat natural. Um, yes, it, it was. It throwing was. yourself in a, in a new context is always feeling, you know, unfamiliar and maybe uh, uncomfortable. But um, so again, I'm, I'm trying to understand this different experience because I, I have a different kind of network and I've had a different kind of experience in, in the way that they, people would appreciate you in in being authentically Andre, not in being prepared and contrived Andre to try to fit in socially. And I understand that- To watch the rest of that episode, go ahead and click the video below me. To see a different compelling Healing Race episode, you can click the video below me. We look forward to seeing you in the next video.